time of a storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in the weary land, weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in the weary land. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. Amen. Number 653, after which we will have the scripture, the meditation scripture, and then prayer. 653, wonderful Jesus. 653. <clears throat> Shall we sing? Wonderful Jesus, glorious friend, he will be with me unto the end, cheering, upholding, keeping me strong, fearless and loyal, shielding from wrong. Oh, wonderful Jesus, marvelous King, uh, ever his praise my spirit shall sing. Oh, when I behold his glorified face, how I shall praise him, O oh, wonderful grace, O oh, wonderful Jesus, showing the way uh, into the blessed kingdom of day, guiding my footsteps, uh, holding control. Making me happy, keeping me whole. Oh, wonderful Jesus, marvelous King, uh, ever his praise my spirit shall sing. Who oh, when I behold his glorified face. How I shall praise His O oh, wonderful grace, O oh, wonderful Jesus, all through the night. He will inform me, giving me light. Then when the morning breaks on the shore, this he will whisper, mine evermore. Oh, wonderful Jesus, marvelous King, uh, ever his praise my spirit <coughs> shall sing. Oh, when I behold his glorified face. How I shall praise His wonderful grace. Good evening. Our meditation will be taken from Acts, the 26th chapter, verses 1 through 7. That's Acts, 26th chapter, verses 1 through 7, and it can also be found in your informer. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Amen. 
which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Our scripture for tonight will be taken from Colossians, the second chapter, verses six and seven. That's Colossians, the second chapter, verses six and seven. And it reads, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. I have read for your hearing Colossians, the second chapter, verses six and second and seven. May the Lord give a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Now let's set our, man, our minds for prayer, led by Brother Cedric Hampton. Let's go to God in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we come to you on the night with thanksgiving in our hearts, thanking thee so much, Father, for allowing us to see this day. Uh, Father, we thank you, Father, for um, keeping us um, through this day, Father, and allowing us to come back this afternoon and uh, work to complete another Lord's Day's worship. Father, we thank you so much for being God, uh, for loving us, for watching over us, keeping us, Father, um, and giving us great health and strength. Father, we ask that you continue to forgive us of our sins, our shortcomings, and our mistakes, Father, whether it be in word, thought, or deed. Uh, Father, you know that each and every day uh, we struggle with things as we battle the world, Father, but we ask that you uh, continue to give us strength um, to keep on keeping on in the Lord, um, in the power of your might. Father, we just ask that you be with our leadership here um, as they continue to lead our congregation in the right direction and uh, continue to be with all those right now, Father, in our congregation who are sick, um, whether it be going through surgical procedures, Father, whether it be uh, loss of loved ones um, or whatever, blessings that they stand in need of, Father, we ask that you uh, be with each of them, Father, um, and, and comfort them uh, and give them strength in every way uh, that they stand in need of. Father, we just ask that you be with uh, the leadership of our, uh, these United States right now, Father. Um, we ask that you be with them and guide them. Father, we know that uh, every four years you put, put a new administration in place, Father, but uh, when it all boils down to it, Father, you're the ultimate one that's in charge. So, Father, we just ask you to continue to be with us, Father, um, be with our, our man servant, Brother Cunningham. Father, we ask that you crown his head with wisdom and knowledge from on high, uh, where he'll break unto us a, a word and simplicity that we may understand and they can be used um, to add to our uh, daily walk of life. Father, we just ask you, that you be with us through the presence of this service and throughout the presence of life. Um, and continue to, to guard, guide, protect us, Father, and at last save us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn to 403. 403. 403. Oh, I want to see him. Shall we sing? As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow, the many arrows pierce my soul, for I'm without within. 
shepherd, my Lord, who leads me on to him I must win. Now, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Now, there to sing forever of his saving grace. Streets of glory, let me lift my voice. And I care, I'll pay my home and land ever to rejoice. Oh, when in service for my Lord, dark may be the night. But I'll cling more close to him, uh, he will give me light. Now Satan's snare may vex the soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord uh, goes ahead, he leads wherever be tied. Now, oh, I want to see him that look upon his face and there to sing forever of his saving grace. Now on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. I care all past a home and land oh, ever to rejoice. Oh, when before me bill arrive from the mighty deed, then my Lord directs my bark to hit a safely kick. Uh, and he lit me gently on through this world below. Now uh, he's a real friend to me, and oh, I love him so. Now, uh, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. singing now oh I want to see him look upon his face who will now there to sing forever oh, his saving grace his saving grace on the street of glory let me live my Lord so well now cares off and I'm home at last will ever to rejoice Amen Can the church say amen? amen. Alright, sound like it's we want to sound like it's full in here if it don't look like it's full, we need to sound like it's full amen. you know the singing may sound like there's a lot of people in here and that's the way it's supposed to be we're supposed to show our love and appreciation for God. I once again thank you for this time that you allowed me to come back and, and, and kind of add a little topping to this morning's sermon because this morning I just kind of gave you the, uh, the entree, but now we're going we gonna to get to, we did a little appetizer and we, we had a little uh, good meat, now we're going to do the dessert because now we need to know how all what was said this morning, how we are to apply it to our lives. And I think it's just, it's important to know how to do it as well as how to say it. 
And so with that in mind, let's go to God in prayer. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we once again come to your throne with humble hearts, giving thanks, Heavenly Father, for your grace and your mercy, giving thanks for this time that you allowed us to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for this time. We thank you for those who have participated in the service so far. We want you to continue to bless them, Heavenly Father, continue to encourage them. Also want to thank those that have decided to come back, Heavenly Father, to hear another portion of your word. But we also thank for those that might be online as well. We don't want to exclude them, but we appreciate them tuning in and taking the time to hear another portion of your word. And Heavenly Father, we pray that they're prepared, their hearts and their minds to, and their ears to be receptive of your word. Heavenly Father, the things that you have placed upon my heart, the things that I've studied, that I'll be able to deliver to your children without any addition or subtraction, but be able to encourage, to uplift, and empower them in their daily walk of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I was saying this morning, we talked about leadership. So I'm talking this evening, leading like Jesus. Leading like Jesus. And the scripture reading is like the ending of the story. So we're going to actually wind up. I had the scripture read to kind of set the tone. But at the end, we're going to actually read that again. So we know that how this all comes together. Lead like Jesus. So we have to do things that are required of us to be leaders. And if any of you have ever had a job where you were the lead person or or the manager, there, there was a certain responsibility that was re expected of you. And you are to lead the people that are following you. And I know when I was a manager, my attitude was, there's no job that I can't do, won't do, and not willing to do. And, but at the same time, I didn't give jobs to people who I thought were beneath me. And they said, what do you mean, Brother Kyle? You, you're the boss. I said, no, I, I said, I'm the leader. It's in between being a leader and a boss. Y'all know the difference. A boss tells you, go do this and go do that. Uh, go over here and go over there. But a leader actually steps out front and says, watch what I do. Watch how I act and follow suit. So a lot of times what I would do with my employees Whatever the task was, I would always ask them, well, these are the things that we have to do. What is it that you like to do? And they, and they look at me and they say, why don't you go to them? I said, no, nah, because I know if I tell you to do it, there's a chance that it won't get done or it won't get finished. And then it's still on me to get it done because why? I'm the manager. And so I knew that. So I said, well, I want you to choose what you would like to do. And every time I would do that, you know, people would pick whatever their favorite thing was to do, and I'm like, well, that's fine. As long as you get it done, I'm okay. I'm good. Because that's less stuff off my plate. Because I got a big job. I got to make sure all this run. So I need as much help as I can get. So if you're willing to do this little part, that's one less thing that I have to do. And so, I look at the church the same way. We have a lot of talent in the church. It's not all on Brother Greg. It's not all on Brother Barnes. It's not all on Brother Nelson. It's not all on Brother McLean. Yeah, these men are probably more than capable of doing everything in the church. But I'm quite sure they don't want to do everything in the church. Because I know I don't. I'm honest. I can say it. I don't want to do everything. Even though I might have the ability to do it. I don't want to do everything. I want us to do it. Remember I was talking about this is a we thing. So we need to be involved. We need to work. Because see I like the, per the, the, the W in work is the same W in what? We. All right, it's both of them are W's. 
So they go, you know, they work and we, we and work. That's the way it should be. And so when we talk about Jesus and we look at the father and the son, they worked what? Together. There was not one greater than the other, but they all had, the father had his responsibility. The son had his responsibility. And guess what? So does the Holy Spirit. Because what it says, when they created man, what did God say? Let us create man in what? In our image. In other words, let, let, let's get together and, and, and put this together. So it was always a weak thing. That's why you look at the, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are trifecta. They are together. They're, they're not separate, but they are together. So the church should be the same. So Brother Barnes, I want for you to get for me Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10. And then Brother Nelson, I need for you to give me 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 6. So when we talk about lead like Jesus, Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 10, says what? When we are his workmanship, mm -hmm. created in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Right. Unto good works, which God has before ordained, that we should walk in them. Mm-hmm. Now, the interesting thing is, I, um, I have a version that says, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And see, one thing about it, God has given us all purpose. We all have purpose in God's kingdom. And see, one of the things I keep saying, what the problem, a lot of our problem is, most of us don't know our purpose. Most of us don't know our purpose. And, we, and we're walking around purposelessly in life, not knowing where we're going and what we do, and, and, and not knowing who to rely on. And I say this with, to men especially. We have a purpose. You know how we know we have a purpose? When God created man. He gave him purpose. When God created man, he gave him purpose. When God made woman, he gave her purpose. So understand, we all have a purpose in this life. And God has in advance knew what his purpose was, his purpose was, my purpose was, and your purpose. So we have to learn to what? Work in our purpose. Because the work is what? For good. It says, in Christ Jesus, to do what? Good work, which God had prepared. So in other words, we are prepared to do things that we need to do. What's the thing we need to do, Brother Cunningham? Well, we need to allow Christ to be our Lord and Savior yes. in our lives. Yes. And by doing this, his love for us will show on, not only on how we express it, but how we serve others. How do we serve others? It's how we love one another. Yes, yes. I say this a lot of times. You can never be a true believer if you don't want for your brother what you want for yourself. You can't be a true believer if you don't want for your brother what you want for yourself. I say, I'm going to apply it even more. You can't be a true believer if you don't want for your husband what you want for yourself. You can't be a true believer if you don't want for your wife what you want for yourself. You're not a true believer if you don't want for your children what you want for yourself. See, it's, it's all incumbent of how you really truly believe who is your Lord and Savior. Because if you truly believe, you want for them the same benefits the same grace, the same mercy that is bestowed upon you. You want them to have the same ability to what? To see heaven just like you want to see heaven. And you do that by making sure that they know what you know. They believe what you believe. Well, how are they going to believe what I believe? Brother Cottingham, you know, you can't make nobody believe anything. That's true. Yeah. I tell people all the time, God did a wonderful thing for us. He gave us freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. 
But one thing he didn't do, he didn't give us freedom of outcome. All right? You can choose whatever, but you can't choose the outcome. You can do whatever, but you can't choose the outcome. So we teach our children what this is about. We teach each other what this is about. And in doing so, we show how much we love one another because God so loved us that he gave what? His only begotten son. Do you, do you understand? He gave us something that was precious to him. He gave us something he didn't have to give. It, but he saw in us a purpose, a love, a desire to give us something that we could not have obtained on our own. I can't not talk about Jesus. I cannot talk about the Father. I cannot not talk about the Holy Spirit because they gave to me something that I could never get for myself. So I don't have a problem pouring out what was poured in. Servants are also leaders. Listen, how can a servant be a leader? How can a servant be a leader? Well, leadership is not a title. It is a behavior. Leadership is something you do, not what you wear. Leadership is something that is in you. That the title does not define you. If you are a good leader, your leadership will define the title. Not the title defining your leadership. Because you live it day by day. You live it in everything that you do. You live it in everything that you say. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 says what? Now we command you, brethren, mm -hmm. in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which ye received of us. Ooh. Do y'all understand that? Yeah. Leadership is an attitude. Leadership is a lifestyle. Leadership is a purpose. We all have purpose in the church. And whatever that leadership is, you do it to your best ability. If you are a good song leader, you lead songs. If you are a good singer, you help the song leader to lead the song. And I ain't say take over, but help him. If you are a good teacher, you teach. If you are a good teacher's assistant, amen, assist. See, assist is just as important as the main person. Y'all know this. If anybody ever watched basketball, they put up stats. They talk about what? Points and assists. And they, they know that assists actually lead to what? To points. You can't have an assist and not get points. Now, people can get a whole bunch of points and still lose. Y'all know that's true. We sat there, and if I, if I go back to... Um, Will Chamberlain, everybody know that story, him scoring 100 points. But guess what? Still lost. Because there was no assist there. There was no assist. It was just him scoring points. But the other team had assists. The other team worked together. So this one man scored a lot of points. 
but he still lost the game. You can score a lot of points in life and still lose the game because you need assistance and get into heaven. Amen. You can't do this alone. Right. I can't do this alone. I need an assistant. I need somebody to help me. Because I don't know how to get the points. I may know how to score the points. But I need somebody to show me how to get the points. <clears throat> See, the beautiful thing about being a servant, yeah. you humble. You recognize that it's not about me. Mm -hmm. So if you have that same attitude in leadership, it's a beautiful thing because that allows you to what? To follow Christ and lead people in the right direction. 1 Timothy 3, 1 and 2 says this. Here is trustworthy saying, whosoever aspires to be an overseer desire a noble task. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, apt to teach. Not given to drunkenness, verse 3, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. So you ask well, how do we model this, Brother Kyrie? How do we apply this to our lives? Well, all of us should have a full sense of self-control and integrity. You should have integrity when it comes to what you say and what you do. And integrity, in other words, and I, I, I really think it's important that we understand this. If you make a mistake, guess what? Admit it. Oh, you know, I, I, I messed up. Can you forgive me? Yeah. I'm sorry. Why? Because that's part of your integrity. Your ability to recognize that I am, if I, I can make mistakes. I'm not perfect. And because I'm not perfect, I'm willing to admit it as humbly as I know how. So, to do this, we got to take off the old man. Well, we got to take off them lies and put on truth. We got to take off that anger and put on a little peace. We got to take off being um, thievery and being generous. We got to take off gossip and put on encouragement. We got to take off revenge and put on forgiveness. We got to put on the spirit of God. Amen. I say this wholeheartedly as one who wants to help encourage us as a body. And, and like I said before, I, I, I am one who's really charged with men right now. Because do y'all realize, I don't know if many of you know, the number three killer of young black men today is suicide. We have young boys from the age of 10 to 35. Basically, we call it deleting, deleting themselves. In other words, they don't see a purpose for why they need to be here. Church, have we dropped the ball on this? Church, have we stumbled and fell when it came to this? I can't imagine a 10-year-old, a 20-year-old talking about, I don't want to live no more. You ain't lived enough to say, I don't want to live no more. But yet they're saying, I don't want to be here no more. And when you talk to them, the thing that I find to be a consistent conversation is they don't feel valued. Remember I was talking about this morning, feeling valued? 
they don't feel valued. And when they don't feel valued, they don't see a purpose. I can say honestly, in the shop, and it, and it, and it, 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 it is where God kind of put me. I didn't expect him to put me there. But I've had conversations with men as old as 30 and older or seasoned at 60. Tell me some things that I never thought I would ever hear. One of the things that, that really got my attention was I kept hearing this thing about men being abused at a young age. And I'm like, wow. Well, I know women, we talk about women being abused at young, but we really don't talk about men being abused at young, especially under the age of, of 10. And so I said, well, I'm going to find out how true this is. I'm, I'm going to test the waters. Yeah. So 20 of my male customers that come into the shop, I asked them, had they ever been abused? And evidently, whatever environment I had created, they felt comfortable enough to tell me, yes, I was eight years old. I was 10 years old. And, I, and out of those 20 men, 18 of them had been abused. It woke me up to the fact that we got some work to do. We've got to be able to reach people who are hurting that we don't even realize are hurting. And just to show you how strong this was, one of those men who told me this was 65 years old. And he said to me, you're the first person I ever told. I've never talked about this to anybody. And he's 65. He been carrying that with him all his life. And he said, I feel a little relief now. We have the hope, which is Christ Jesus. We've got to pour hope into people. We got to show people that there is more to life than what you see. We got to show the people there's more to this than what you're looking at. No, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be easy, but there's more to it. Because if you just hold on a little while longer, if you just stay obedient, if you just give over to God, you'll realize not only your purpose, but your destination. Which brings us to Colossians chapter 2. And it says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. I thought it was so interesting to realize how much God has poured into all of us. Yes. You know how much he's poured into all you gotta do is look how long he's allowed you to be here. Right, man. He is constantly pouring into you. That means there's some work that you what? Gotta pour out of. I believe that with all my heart, that we as a church can do anything. We can meet any challenge that is put before us. We can succeed at anything that is laid at our doorstep. Why? Because the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are with us. And because I believe that, and you should believe that, and we should believe that, we should not have a problem preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I just hope this day has encouraged you. 
And I know it has encouraged me because what was so funny was there were people <laughs> leaving service saying to me, I appreciate you. Do you know how impactful that was? That lets me know that we can do it. And I believe in we. Because we can do anything through Christ who strengthens us. Our song invitation for the time is what? I am the vine. You know, he said, I am the vine, ye are what? The branches. Do you understand? He ain't going to leave you out there by yourself. All you got to do is what? Hold on. He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. In other words, I got you. You don't have to worry. I will be there. I will pour into you so that you can pour out. Because see, things that's on the vine get what? Produces fruit. Fruit. As long as you stay what? With the vine. Now, if you think you can do it on your own, let's see how much fruit you produce. All right? But as long as you stay with that branch, you'll be able to produce from your vines. If anyone here is a member of the body, you can ask for forgiveness or prayer if you need it. Also, if you're not a Christian, and I, I, you know, I have to constantly do this. I, it's part of my thing that I do, but it says you hear the gospel. It says the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. It says believe. I tell you, uh, if you believe in God, what? Believe also what? In me. He says repent. He said, I tell you, if, if, I tell you, Nate, unless you repent, you shall all like was what? Perish. He said confession is important. He said he who confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. And then be baptized for the remission of sin, Acts 2 and 38. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation. I am the vine and ye are the branches bear precious fruit for Jesus today. Continue to just pray for the Garden Valley Church of Christ. We just ask prayers for our continued work over there. And also, just keep me in prayer. God has shown me a lot, and he's constantly pouring into me and pouring out. And I just ask that you continue to pray that God continues to use me as he sees fit. If you did not have the opportunity to commune this morning, we're going to give you that opportunity right now. We'll turn to number 720. Mm -hmm. We sung that this morning. Why did my Savior come to earth? <clears throat> he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go. Oh, why did he choose a lowly bird? And because he loved me so.
he gave his precious life for me, for me because he loved me so. We have come to our part of the service where we have an opportunity to commune, commune in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. Savior Jesus Christ before he comes again. Is there anyone here that has not taken the Lord's Supper? Okay. I will be reading from Mark, the 14th chapter, verses 20, starting with verse number 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body, and he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let us go to God in prayer. To our God, our Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for this opportunity to commune in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you will bless the bread and bless the fruit of the vine, and that we do so in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. This is our prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take this opportunity for those who did not have an occasion to give into the Lord's treasury. Once again, you can give that in right at this time. We're going to ask the ushers to come forward. In Luke 6, chapter, verses 38, the Bible reads, Give, you give, and it will be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure that you use, it will be measured unto you. This scripture, this verse of scripture teaches us to have a spirit of giving, the same spirit that God gave, God had when he gave his son for our salvation. Let us go to God in prayer. God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for finances. We thank you for the ability to earn monies as you have intended, that we can give back into your treasury. Thank you, Lord, for a perfect example that you gave, and we just pray that we can continue in your, in your footsteps. Bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. amen. I did not receive any visitors' cards, but if we have visiting guests with us, kindly stand that we may acknowledge you and recognize you. Please stand, give us your name. Even if you did not, you are, honor, you are our honored guest, and we invite you to come back and worship with us on the next available occasion. I'd like to encourage our family and, and, and ask us to continue our prayers for Brother Cottingham and, and, and Brother Cottingham and even for Brother McLean and Sister McLean. We had two fine lessons from our minister today and we just pray that God will bless them richly. Please bless our minister and bless uh, Sister McLean. Other announcements? Brother Greg. Again, we want to thank Brother Dale for those two encouraging messages on, uh, on today. Uh, I, I'd like to keep the promises that I, that I make. Um, I got a, a, a text, I actually spoke with Sister Lydia, Lydia Murphy, and she listens in all, all, all the time, and she asked that we uh, pray for her, um, for her uh, and her sister, her sister Eve. 
as, uh, as well. So if uh, Sister uh, Eve and Sister Liddy, if you're out there still listening in, uh, we are going to do, uh, do exactly that to kind of pray for, uh, pray for you in the situation, situation that, you're, uh, that you're in. Uh, let's prepare for our dismissal. Let us be standing, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me, guide my feet, Lord, guide my feet, guide my feet, Lord, guide my feet, while I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Just hold my hand. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. While I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's once again that you have uh, given us this day, and we pray, Father, that we have filled this day with just, uh, just acknowledging your, uh, your, your presence in our, in our life. Father, you have blessed us thus far, and for that we say thank you. Now, Father, we turn our attention to the sisters who have asked that I would remember them in prayer, so the Murphy sisters. Father, we, uh, they, they share with me the situation that they are in. We just pray, Father, that you will intercede in their situation, Father. They're in good spirits, Father, and we thank you so very much for that. We just pray, Father, that you will keep them, uh, keep them listening in or at, at some point could be with us at the, at, a, at the most convenient or the next convenient time. Father, we ask now that as we uh, leave this place that you will continue to bless us, uh, help us to arrive to our next destination safely and unharmed. And again, Father, we have ate from the spiritual food that uh, Brother Fidel Cottingham has Amen. given us through uh, that you have placed on his heart, and we say thank you for that. And again, Father, be with us that we may, may leave this place and arrive at our next destination safely. This is our prayer, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. Amen.